G'day, g'day. Hope you guys are having a good one. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be covering exporting from Gaia 2.0 to importing into Blender. Um, I did recently make a video on importing from GeoGen. Got a comment on how to import from Gaia. Figure I might as well cover it. Um, it's fairly similar. The whole importing process is pretty similar. So if you want a potentially a little bit more in-depth video, go watch that uh, GeoGen, just the end, I cover the whole importing, and I'll do a little bit of importing in here, but for the most part, this is more the whole Gaia aspect of how you export as. Exporting from Gaia can be a little bit confusing from the get-go, so might as well cover that. So from the basics, uh, I've made a very simple terrain just with a couple nodes um, here. Um, feel free to, you know, use your own terrain for this um potentially you can use a sample project as well the only issue with the sample projects is some of them use files that are kind of like cached in so the issue with that is sometimes i've had issues with not being able to export so preferably quickly go make up a simple scene you could do something similar to mine with it's just mountain range ao sat map and then i'm just using color erosion um but otherwise yeah Okay, sweet. So getting into it, um, you want to, I guess, note what you actually want exported from here, you know? Um, at the very basics, you're going to want a color, and you're going to, well, maybe you don't even want a color, maybe you uh, just want to mask off of those. But for the sake of this, I'll just use, you know, color, um, and you'd want a height. Now, the height doesn't even need to be that, as you could... Um, I personally like using a mesher, right? And a mesher allows me to export the mesh instead. Um, so I'll cover that as well. Um, but yeah, you can also uh, export normals. Uh, I have had issues with the normals sometimes being a little bit funky in the past. That could just be something that I'm doing setup wise um, or what's up with that. You know, whether you're supposed to be using OpenGL or DirectX. Um, that's dependent on the program. I'm going to quickly double check. Sweet, with a quick, quick look, turns out Blender apparently does uh, OpenGL, so make sure to be on OpenGL for the most, for like, I guess the best results. But I still have issues, so it could be something um, buggy with Guy 2's and or maybe it's just what I'm doing. But regardless, um, that's effectively what I'm going to want as a base setup. Uh, this can get, you know, a bit more complex if you're doing uh, really massive um, setups and stuff. But yeah. So in order to choose, because by default, if I press Control B, we'll open up the build. Um, you're going to see there's nothing, you know, how do you know? Like nothing is going to be exported effectively. Oh, sorry, sure. Um, so how do you, you know, determine what's going to be exported? Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to right click the node um that you wish to export from um and you got to click uh mark for export so otherwise you can press f3 um now this will export i believe it's only just the color i don't think it'll export the um the height so you'll want to do that i could be wrong maybe they've changed it that you, it does but from what i know just uh export everything that you are going to want in particular so yeah so this will be my color map as this is the last color node i'm having you can you know um you know if you're trying to ma uh, merge them and stuff you can have like you know your combine or mixer node or whatever you're using there uh, there's my height map um generally you're only going to be wanting either a height map or a mesh i find uh with i think professional i believe i'm on professional yep um being able to make use of adaptive tries is probably going to be better than a height but it depends you know maybe you want to do a little bit of your own stuff there so um that's that um normals as well so we're going to export the normals and we're going to export the measure um measure settings can be up to whatever you uh desire but i'm going to go normalize scale because i just find that a bit easier uh, fbx and adaptive you can go tries or quads 
but if you go adaptive it adds more detail where more detail is required and less so for example these regions will probably have more whereas regions like this will have a bit less uh, we can look at that though i believe it's working with fbx now maybe not this version maybe it's the next version that supports fbx we'll have a look um but yeah that should be pretty much everything so um i'm gonna once again press um control b um just so we get access to this now we can choose what resolution we want to export in i'm going to do 2k you could go 4k or anything um bear in mind this doesn't need this doesn't need to be the same as what your uh viewport resolution is but you're going to have slight discrepancies between the different resolutions and stuff um so do note that i guess if you want the exact thing that you're after view in 1k but it's probably going to be a little bit more performant running this at 512 while you render um change any settings to whatever you want them to be make sure that your build destination is set up onto uh, whichever folder you want um, and you can change you know overwriting files or incrementing uh, if you don't want to lose your files um but yeah from here uh, i'm going to set these to whatever i want i don't think changing this measure makes any difference because it's going to export as fbx anyway um normals you could either go xr or png 16 i'll personally change these to all png 16 just so i can visualize them um but xr is probably going to give you a slightly better result maybe but you can't visualize them so uh you know they're they're all good i the only thing is is make sure you're at least doing png 16 for your height okay color can be eight but 16 is important as, um, otherwise you're going to get some banding and stuff. From here, you can either, you know, close guy and build. Uh, that's going to run a bit better, but there may be issues with that. Uh, or you can just start build normally. Um, should be pretty quick, shouldn't take too long, especially because there's not too many nodes. Um, and it makes the most of like your GPU and stuff, so pretty quick as you can see so from here we've been given a report and stuff of like you know how everything's running um what's exported we've got our normal map as we can see um we've got our color we've got the height um it shows a quick view just so you know what is actually um you know what project this is um that's from something else that was a different project that i was working on for the test um and then of course we've got the mesh didn't export why did the mesh not export let me uh quickly check that all right uh, i mean i don't know i just changed it back from fbx to obj uh, maybe they're just a bit more um what do you call it maybe it's just a safer file size and i relinked it reopened the project i tried a couple of things i'm not too sure what what happened you know if you get the same issue where it's just not exporting that then uh, you know just relaunch the project relink the measure maybe change the format i don't know unfortunately I, I don't know exactly what it is i just know that sometimes there can be issues with it um but yeah um regardless uh once you you know you're ready and you've exported everything um you can open up blender i'm gonna quickly add an hdri just so we can visualize this um of course be either in um i think if you're gonna do height maps and stuff i'm not too sure i think some of the latest blender one uh blender versions you can use eevee for displacement uh, although you, otherwise you could just use the actual displacement in here so i guess it probably doesn't matter but um yeah otherwise cycles is probably i mean it's always going to give you a better result right um but yeah so we can drag our measure in import it um focus on and on it um and yeah this is our uh terrain came out pretty good as we'll see here when it loads you can see how the adaptive uh rise is working where some of these bigger regions don't have stuff whereas some of these uh, higher regions have a heap of um uh, polygons i guess um you can you know shade smooth 
or shade auto smooth whatever gives you the best result shade flat i mean realistically when you're this far away it's not going to make a difference but if you were you know um actually going for a, a pretty tight view maybe you'd want to be on shade smooth um, sometimes you just lose that that um hardness of course uh next we're gonna go to shading um new we can drag our files in so that'll be normal color um and i'm i won't need mountain range out okay uh this is just for the mesher so we're gonna drag our base color in as you can see works fine looks good i'll bump that roughness up so i'm not having to deal with weird uh stuff there then normals i personally like going normal map color normals here this is going to be the normals here um let's run it in here so sometimes you might get issues with your normal map you can fix that with you know increasing or decreasing i believe this is uh maybe it has something to do with oops uh going into here yeah, I, I think it uh, maybe it doesn't have it anything to do with the hdri i've had in the past sometimes that'd be the case but yeah potentially just decreasing it's the normals aren't as harsh i don't know Um, but yeah, I don't know, you, like, it's, it's once again, some programs may work better with it, I don't know exactly what's causing that, um, potentially it's worth not using it, um, but if you, if it, you know, maybe you know something, if you know, um, what could be causing that, then yeah, you know, I love, uh, somebody to go in the comments and, um, you know, cover that, so if anybody else runs into that, that you know they know the answer but if not um that's all good you know some programs will work better with it and and vice versa but yeah um let's sort of see how it sort of treats a little bit differently whether it's looking better or not is uh i guess up to really debate but um yeah so that's ultimately how you would import it all and get it going um overall pretty cool project uh pretty cool results sorry um add all your extra stuff to it now if we were to go height map wise high map works a little bit different um so we can add a, a plane just go drag it out it's of course going to be a little bit bigger because uh this is a bit smaller by default um and so from here we can go plus and this time i mean i'll, I'll skip the normal maps out uh normal map out on this one just because it seems to be a little bit funky uh, but we'll drag out both the height and the color erosion. Um, so from here, I'm going to add a displace. Um, I believe shove it in height and put this in the displacement uh, region. And as you can see here, it's you know it's it's giving us um, what do you call it bump. So it's using uh, bump mapping to uh effectively displace it but that's obviously not a great result unless you're looking top down uh it could probably work top down but uh, of course this is not what we're wanting to do so uh from here we're gonna press in uh go to options settings and displacement only i'm just gonna drag this mid level to zero just so it's um the most part flat you can press in to get rid of that and from here if you go into edit mode you can uh, subdivide it and the more subdivisions you have the more uh, resolution you're going to have effectively so i think the highest you can do by default and subdivide uh, subdivision is 50 there and so you know it's giving me a little bit of you know displacement here um so this is uh let's see this is 2,000 hertz or, you know, 5,000 tries. Obviously not enough. Uh, I think at least 100K is probably going to be your, uh, what you're going to be happy with. At least 100K. So leaving it around 100K. Uh, we're getting a bit of displacement here, as you can see. Still not great. 
I would say if you want like uh, something that's not for far away, uh, going for something like, um, what do you call it? Going for something like a million is probably going to give you a better result. So of course, select everything. Uh, you can subdivide it. It's going to subdivide it a couple of extra times till we hit uh, a million. So we're hitting about a million tries here. And you know, it's pretty good detail wise. Um, you know, shade flat to see every individual fa uh, face and everything. Um, which overall pretty good result. If you get these weird issues, which you may get of like the sides looking a bit weird, that's because it um, repeats. So changing it to clip should fix that issue. Um, and yeah, as you can see, you're getting effectively the same result. Um, bit of a different process, of course. Uh, hype maps, you know, I think at the end of the day, if you are in like community or a law version, then hype maps are completely fine. But as soon as you start getting adaptive tries, you're going to get much better results. Um, of course, because you can uh, it effectively, um, what's the word, decimates uh, the mesh uh, in, in areas that don't really need it. I mean, even if I were to match it with this being, what? Uh, I mean, it's going to run bad. Two million tries, right? Even if I were to match it on here, edit, you know, subdivide it once should get me to that 2 million. So even with it being the same, and I, you know, scale these to be about the same. You're probably getting better for close-ups and stuff with here. Or a shade flat, for example. And, you know, this isn't an overly detailed uh, project anyway, so it's probably not going to make too much of a difference anyway. But, um, yeah. But you can adjust the scale, though, if you are using displacement. That's probably one of, like, the few reasons that you'd probably want to go above, um, go with displacement over, um, you know, normal mesh if you want to adjust those sorts of um things but yeah at the end of the day those are your two different uh ways you can go about making um what well, you know exporting and then uh importing your terrains into blender um hopefully that all made sense and was not too bad um a bit different as you'll see um you know recorded it's a long it takes a bit longer uh than something like uh, exporting out of geogen but you know uh, there's some pros of this year i find a bit of better result um but whereas geogen a bit easier a bit quicker um you know not having to deal with these odd issues i guess that may have come with uh, i think guy 2.0 had some issues which they have been uh, doing a great job of uh pumping through and, and getting rid of so yeah hopefully that was helpful um yeah hopefully you've you know get your terrain exported and then yeah, um, if you have any extra masks, then you can, of course, mask them and change, like, your roughness and uh, um, stuff like that and start using masks to get these colors going. Um, so then you can start getting some real cool tiling uh, on the different regions. But, yeah, thank you. Have a good one and catch you guys next time. See you.